needs to manage its complexity by focusing on the important things which are required uh, in the project and which would be useful for the customer's point of view and it uh, and at the same time it would help us to make our entity uh, look or function different from the entities which already exist so the main point is that it would always uh, help us in identifying the behavior of the real world entity so i'll just write two points about it and it manages essential aspects okay now the second the second factor is encapsulation the name itself says that we are unbinding few things in a single unit okay so encapsulation in designing a few models would help us in wrapping up of data which can be uh, separated on the operation of the users or the clients means what all data would be available for the users to access and what all data would be there uh, which would be available for the admin level or which would be worked upon or which would be processed so encapsulation would always help in wrapping up of data and it would separate uh, the data which can be used by the users which can which can be shared with the users and which can be kept with the admin or the development side for the further uh, modifications now the next point is modularity now what is the modularity which is one of the aim of object oriented modularity means combining data and its behavior in in a simple way if we have to define this we can say that modularity usually deals with combining data and behavior means how it can be used means we can say that if we are designing a system we can break up complex system into small and self contained and easily underst uh, understandable pieces and binding data together and hiding them outside the world okay that means when you are designing a system you can um, um, means instead of starting working on that system and as a whole part or as a single unit we can uh, break down uh, into smaller parts and then we can understand those par parts uh, or the sections in a depth and then we can bind data we can allot data for that particular section and see how those sections can be dealing uh, will be dealing with those particular data and the data required would be published would be available for the people and the data which should not be shared would be hidden from the outside world okay so that is called modularity means it depends which data should be shared at which level for the users and which should not be shared with the outside world
So we can see that in this, we'll be breaking down the whole system into smaller chunks or sections and we'll be working on them individually and we'll see each section deals with which part of data and how it can be processed and would be made available for the, uh, for the world or the customers. And in this way, we would be finding data together and hiding them with the outside one. Means we will be uh, disclosing or we would be sharing that much amount of data which is required. Rest would be with the developing section. Now, the last aim which is included in is sharing. Now, how sharing could be done at different levels? What would be the structured? Okay, what would be the classes? What would be the subclasses? Is there any data redundancy or not? That would be looked after in the sharing section. That means one of the aims of the object-oriented design modeling is that we should be able to share the modules and the data at the difference level. Now, how this sharing can be possible? It can be carried out with the help of inheritance. Okay, so inheritance would help us to share the data and the properties of the base classes. And at the same time, it would aim, it would focus uh, how the subclasses, how the similar subclasses uh, would be operated, how they would be worked upon, and uh, if there is any redundancy, how those redundancy can be removed, and how the subclasses with similar properties uh, can be processed or worked upon. So, the next point is sharing. So, sharing would always help or always look in inheritance. It is possible with the help of inheritance, which would always help us to share the data and the properties of the uh, base class with the subclasses. And at the same time, it would lead us to the common structure to be shared among the several similar subclasses. Okay, that means we will have a common structure that would be shared throughout the working or the designing of that particular model. Among several similar subclasses. Okay. So these were the four aims of the object oriented, and these aims are always kept in uh, mind while we are working on the designing or the modeling section of a particular project. Now, in the last class, we have discussed about the designing. Okay, so let's see what are the importance of modeling, why it is required. If we are working on any project, why is it required to have a modeling section? Why is it always said object-oriented design and modeling? Why OOA is not sufficient? What? Why object-oriented designing is not sufficient? 
for a particular project why modeling is also included so let's see what is the importance of modeling so modeling would always help us as the name suggests modeling means that we are having a model okay and designing would help us to uh, maintain the proper arrangement of or the structure of that particular model okay so we can say that designing and modeling are connected with each other okay we cannot say that designing is an individual parameter or modeling is an individual parameter or a section they both are interrelated to each other where uh, wherever we will be talking about the designing it will include some structure or model and wherever we will be talking about a model or its structure or flow there a designing is important okay so modeling would always help to visualize the system okay as in the last class we have we were talking about we took an example of the library, library management and we have discussed about the dice game also so if we are uh, uh, working on that uh, particular we are trying to build that particular software okay so uh modeling would help us to visualize uh, see when we start working on it we cannot uh, we cannot predict how the uh, software would look like how what would be the performance how the modules would be interacting with each other but if we have done the designing section we have drawn different models for it okay so those modeling will make our work easy they would help us to understand they will help us to analyze how different modules different classes of classes are interacting with each other how it would work how the input would be taken how the output would be generated how the data would be processed how it can be stored retrieved updated all the things okay so model would always uh, uh, we give us the layout we can say a layout or a rough idea or we can say a pictorial representation or we can say a picture of the system uh, how it would look like after the completion and it is not state start it would exactly look like this because during the developing phase many changes can be introduced many things can be done okay but in the starting phase a model a layout a structure would help us to take our steps further and at the same time it would help us to understand uh, how we have to proceed and what all things should be kept in mind okay and at the same time it would specify the structure in detail okay so it permits to specify now if we are talking about a system it gave us the layout what this system will have but in that system as an individual what would be their function how their interaction would be taking place in which all parts its working would be divided that would be easily explained in the modeling okay so it will give us the layout at the same time it will explain us it would show how the entities in this particular uh, model are working and how they are interacting with each other how the data transaction is being going on and Uh, which all operation as a single unit they are being involved okay now when the things are being discussed when the things are being represented in details so it would always guide us to construct a system okay so modeling would guide us that means 
things. It would help how you should proceed, what all things you should make if you have uh, if you uh, if the things are clear in mind, how the things are to be maintained, how they have to be designed. So it would help you how uh, the programming should be done, how they should be interlinked, and how the progress, how the construction of the project can be carried out successfully. Okay, and the last would be documentation. Okay, now this documentation would include the decisions which we have taken, okay, and the changes which we have done. Changes different proposals and many more things. Okay, so modeling would always also include the documentation section. That means, uh, if you remember in, in uh, the software engineering also we have studied the documentation uh, states a very important role. Okay, so in the modeling, documentation would tell how uh, this layout was prepared, what was the reason behind it, what was the idea, how these entities were taken, how they had a communication, okay, and while working on this project, if any important decision was taken, so at which, at which section, at which developing stage it was taken, and by taking the decision, what were the changes they were introduced, okay, and what were the different proposals which were proposed by the committee, okay. So these all things would be in detail, in depth, they would be described thoroughly so that whoever goes through it can easily understand how this modeling was done and finally how we obtain the final product, okay. So this was about the importance. Now, let us discuss about the development life cycle. Okay, uh, phases of object-oriented system development life cycle. What are the phases included in this and how it helps in complete of a system or a project or its software. So let's have a look on this. Phases of object oriented system development life cycle. or we can call it development cycle also, okay? Now, the first would be analysis, okay? We have seen in every um, model, whenever we uh, select a model uh, to construct a software, we have seen that the first phase is the analysis phase. Okay, so in analysis, what usually we do, we gather the data. Okay, what is the requirement for constructing this project? What would be the things required? Okay, and where all it would be used? So we can see that analysis phase would always focus on the requirements collection and it would look after how this project, how and where the software project would be used and what would be its application. Okay, so we can say that analysis phase would deal with requirements and it would focus what would be its application, where and how it would be used. So the first would be analysis phase. Okay, now the second 
at the second sub sin would be object design. Now, object design. Identify the objects which would be required. Okay, so for that we need data structure. algorithms and controls okay so these would help us to design objects okay to see how they can be arranged okay as we are talking about the object oriented development cycle okay how it is being developed so it would help us uh, to have a data structure means where data can be arranged modified accessed and all algorithms required and the controls required to maintain it with accuracy okay now the third point which we would required is system design okay the third is system design in this it includes system architecture and subsystems system design we would be talking about the architecture the layout of the system and in detail we would be see how this system is uh, divided or how the system consists of a uh, combination of collaboration of subsystems okay uh, a system can be made up of combination of subsystems also okay so this would help us to understand how these systems are connected with each other how they are working what is their structure what all the components included in okay so third phase would explain us or would give us the detail about the layout of the system and the subsystems involved in it okay so when these three phases are observed we have the fourth phase that is the implementation part okay so the fourth one would be implementation when these all things are ready now in implementation it deals with programming okay how these things and the second would be database access okay so this would be the development cycle of the object oriented system as we are talking about the system so first would be the analysis phase we would see uh, which would deal with the requirements explanation and what all things are required to make or to design or to complete this project how the work should be started second would be deal with the object design that means it would uh, deal with the data structure the algorithms or the controls required to maintain it functioning third would be the system design which would give us the final layout or the structure and at the same time it would give us the information i mean it consists of how many subsystems and when the layout is ready then uh, it can be proceeded further with the implementation section where the final programming or the coding would be done to make it as a, look like a project and 
uh, would always um, means it would all also keep in mind that how data base can be easily accessed okay so this is the development cycle few terms which plays an important role in oodm so uh, as we will be studying this subject in detail so we should be aware of these terms and their importance and how these would help us to complete the modeling complete the analysis phase and complete the design of a particular project so i'll start with the terms which are used in object oriented design and modeling okay important terms so the first term is is very familiar with us is the class okay so we all know that class is a representation or you know, we can say that it is a collection of objects having similar characteristics and properties okay which exhibit common behavior similar behavior okay so classes uh, if we are working on a project or we are working on software that means we have to identify the classes and we have to see uh, uh, which all objects can be the part of a class that means which have similar characteristics or properties the next would be object okay where object can be used where it should be called okay so object we know that it is an instance of a class okay which has some properties and some characteristics the next term would be encapsulation just now we have seen encapsulation is one of the aim of object oriented also okay so encapsulation so encapsulation is the process we can say it uh, binds it binds attributes and methods together within a class okay so process uh, so we can say that it is a process of binding attributes and method together within a class okay these things would be clear when we start with the designing section so we will understand how this class objects encapsulation and other things would help us okay now the next term which is important is data hiding so so when we will be declaring a class when we will be designing a class so we will design a class in such a way that its data can be accessed only by its class method okay so while designing a data while declaring a data while having an encapsulation we have to make it sure that uh, while we are working on data hiding okay so it should be Uh, maintain that uh, data can be accessed only its by its class method so i can i'll just write here data can be accessed only by its class method now the next is a similar a similar familiar word with us that is inheritance so inheritance is the mechanism that permits new classes to be created out of the existing classes and at the same time it share the properties of the existing class uh, with the new classes okay 
and in such way we extend and retrieve its capabilities and inheritance we have so many types single inheritance is there multiple inheritance multi level hierarchical and hybrid so uh, one of the important term in object oriented designing modeling is that inheritance where we can uh, where it permits us okay inheritance permits us to inherit or to derive a new class from the base class and at the same time the derived class has the properties of the base class and its new properties okay so it helps us to maintain the operation of that particular system maintain the a caliber also okay and its different types helps us in making the project a workable piece so we can go for single inheritance multiple multi level hierarchical or hybrid okay now for making a software okay so one more term which is important is that polymorphism now polyform is we know that ability to take take multiple forms okay so this would help also this would help us to uh, make that a parent class reference is used to refer to a child class okay and how the things could be combined how it can take multiple forms okay so the ability to take multiple forms it's called polymorphism the name itself says that it has many forms okay so a things can have many forms that is a person can have different characteristics if we'll be talking about a real world example for polymorphism that means a person having different characteristics okay at the same time a person if i will be talking about a man a man can be a father or a husband or an employee okay so can have different characteristics so that is called polyformism a single entity having different forms different roles different characteristics now the next important term is generalization now in generalization what is done is that we combine okay we uh, identify the common characteristics of classes and we combine them in uh, a form in a class okay combine to form a class in a higher level of hierarchy so generalization mainly deals with identifying the characteristics of the classes and then they are combined to form a class and sub classes are combined to form a generalized super class okay so in this uh, we can say for example if we will be talking about the vehicles okay so vehicles can be have different categories okay uh, the vehicles which run on land the vehicles which can be used on uh, water or air so if we'll be talking about uh, land vehicles so, so we can say car, car is a kind of a land vehicle okay next is specialization Spe uh, specialization is the reverse of generalization in generalization we combine sub classes to form a generalized super class or we can say that uh, the common characteristics of the classes are combined to form a class and this uh, the reverse of the generalization process is being carried out 
okay that means a class is divided into sub classes with different uh, properties and and it goes on for example if uh, i took uh, in the generalization i took an example of the vehicle that car is a kind of a land vehicle now again i'll take an example of the vehicle so in specialization vehicle can be have different classes like land vehicle water vehicle and air okay and further it can be divided into more parts like which what all are land vehicle we can say a car or a bus or bike something of that sort okay then we can say what about the water vehicle maybe a ship or a boat and many more and if we we'll be talking about the air we can say aeroplane and helicopter and so on okay so this is uh, this is the reverse of generalization now the next term which is used here is link it represents a connection through which an object collaborates with other objects okay so it is the representation of connection we can say that re presentation of connection okay now now the next thing is association now what is association it is a group of links having common structure and common behavior see link is a representation of the connection okay so the association is the group of links means group of connections okay group of links having common structure and common behavior now what does it do it depicts the relationship between objects of one or more classes what is the relationship between them link can be defined as an instance of association okay now in association we have different degrees that is unary binary and ternary okay a unary relation connects objects of same class binary connects objects of two classes and ternary connects objects of three or more classes so i'll just write it is group of links group of links having common structure and behavior and behavior now association can be of three types it can be unary that means relation ship consists or means connects objects of same classes okay connects objects of same classes now the next is binary which connects objects of two classes and third one is ternary which connects objects of three or more classes so these are the few terms okay i will not say these are the only terms which are important in object oriented designing modeling no it's not like that these are the few basic and important terms which plays an important role 
in OODM and which helps us in designing and making a model a successful one. Okay, so these were the few important terms. So this is about today's class. Okay, now uh, in the next class we would be studying about object modeling technique that is OMT. How OMT helps us in making a model successful by designing it. And there are three OMT models which we would be studying. That is Rambach OMT, Booch OMT, and Jacobson Pose. Okay, so these would be the three OMT uh, techniques which we would be studying in detail. So the today's class is over if you have any doubt just you can share and by the time i just download uh, the attendance okay i'm uploading the notes after the class i have i have already uploaded i guess if i have not uploaded i'll upload it today the first class content and uh, by the evening i'll upload today's class content also